Hello again. Welcome to episode 18 of the Meltran Designs Knitting Corner podcast. I'm your host, Melissa, also known as Anansi on Ravelry and on Plurk. I am Meltran Designs, and there's a Meltran Designs Ravelry group. Today is Monday, April 15th. And it's been two weeks since I recorded, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> I intended to record every single day last week, and it just didn't happen. Um, the girls were still out of school for spring break, and it just didn't happen. And I apologize, and I missed you all. And surprisingly enough, I don't have a ton more to talk about. <laughs> You'll see why. Uh, so let's jump right into it. I hope you all had a wonderful two weeks, and I hope spring is showing up where you are. Um, unless you're in the Southern Hemisphere, then I hope it's a beautiful fall. And if you're new, welcome. Thank you for joining. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you again with me. And I hope you all enjoy our time together. Weeks in review, happenings this week, these weeks, whatever you want to call it, because I never don't remember what I call it apparently. <laughs> week in review. No, I don't call it week in review. I call it happenings this week. Good grief. I've been watching everybody else's podcasts. <laughs> Forget what my own segments are called. Happenings these last two weeks. Not a ton. Um... The girls each took turns spending the night with my sisters, which I think I did talk about, or my sister. I think I talked about that last time because Kyan was over there, or Anansi was over there. Kyan spent the night last week on Monday night. It was fun for her. <laughs> Not us having her gone. That was fun too, I guess. Um, let me see. I'm trying to think. Nothing really. Nothing really happened. Um, it was last week was actually kind of a rough week. Um, Anansi and I have had our struggles in life with each other, um, and she was making some not so great choices. <laughs> so it was stressful, and I was constantly kind of. Um, not on guard, like I was being attacked, but, um, like ready and really vigilant watching what was going on. Um, anyway, it just was kind of a tough week, which is why I didn't record. I got a lot of knitting done though. And, um, my vodka lemonade class is going great. That was the second week we have this week off and then we'll have two weeks after that. Um, I don't know what my next class is going to be yet. We'll see. Whatever my students decide or if there's a suggestion made or whatever. Um, we are two months and five days away from the zombie knit apocalypse retreat. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> Super excited about that. And I, oh, well, I did buy my plane tickets. I guess that's a big thing. I got those. I guess a week ago Sunday. Did I tell you about that then? Now I can't remember. Well, the plane tickets are bought. I think I did might have talked about it, but I'm still excited. And knitting for the retreat is in full swing craziness, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, oh, I have to show you my birthday nails because I have my birthday but I hadn't had my nails done yet, I don't think. Yes, I did, because I remember showing you. I'll show you again, in case this is your first time. Oh my gosh, I'm all over the place. This is what happens when you don't record in two weeks. I'll show you my awesome nails. Woohoo! 80s Fantastic. Neon nails. In honor of the 80s when I was born. And all y'all are going, uh-huh. We already saw it. And I just threw an all y'all in there. Goo hoo. I'm tempted to turn this off, but I'm not going to. Because I love watching people when they don't 
um, cancel stuff or turn it off and start over again. So you're just going to get me kind of all over the place. This is what you get when it's been two weeks. Not going to let it happen again as best to the best of my ability. Been VKNing. That's about it. Yep. Alrighty, let's go into the knitting. Works in progress. I have two. Well, I have more than that. I have two that I've worked on, and I'm going to talk about the works in progress um, kind of uh, change up when I'm done showing you what I have in the news. Let me show you what I started but won't be getting worked on for a little bit. It's the Color Affection Shawl um, by Vera Valamaki, and this is a shop sample for damselfly fibers or damselfly yarns. Uh, as you can see, I'm done with the first color, and then I'm down, I have eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight stripes so far with the second color, and usually, or um, I don't remember how many I have to go to, I don't have the pattern sitting next to me, I'm wanting to say 12, I'm pretty sure that's it, and then the third color is this blue, I don't have the tags with me, for uh, the col the actual color names. The purple is, no, I was going to say Plum Crazy, but I think that was the monster I made for Cayenne. Hmm. Well, um, I did say it in my last, the last podcast or the one before that, in the last two, I have, I've said what it is, um, what the exact colors are. Sorry about that. I thought the tags were in here, but they are not. So, my that that's in my thirty one zipper pouch. Love it for a project bag. The other thing that I'm working on, or, um, that if you've been watching, you will have seen this before. This is my lunatic fringe shawl out of some hand spun that I made last year. Let me get this all untangled here. Oh, out of the way. There we go. This has seen. A good amount of work. I did three repeats on it yesterday, and it's starting to get a little scrunched on the needles I have it on, which is good. It means it's growing. So here's here's my tentacle shawl. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine repeats of that done. And that's showing up really nicely, true to color. I love the texture of the hand spun, and it's so soft and nice. I'll show you how much I still have left of the cake of yarn. A lot. You can see it's pretty thick. So I still have a lot of knitting to do left. Knitting left to do, I guess. <laughs> Man. <sighs> words fail me. That happens very few times in my life. <laughs> so, like I said, I'll be I'll be scooting this up to um, another core or another cable here pretty soon. There's there's still a good amount of of room for for sliding around. So I I don't like when when things really spread out on the cable because I, uh, I find it harder to scoot them up than when they're squished because you can push it up against itself a lot easier. So I'll wait um, probably two or three more repeats before I um, put a larger cable or a longer cable on. These are on size six, oh, um, these are on size six, 4.0 millimeter and so is the color affection. These are my Diacraft interchangeable, the darn pretty interchangeables that I got. Uh, back in January. So, and like I said, this is some hand spun. There's Superwash Merino, BFL, and then um, nylon, but it's like the Firestar type, um, shiny. Let's see if I can... Oh, there's a little kind of chunk of it. I don't know if it'll show up or not. Right? It's not going to show up right in there. You'll be able to see it when I post um, finish finished pictures in my project page and again this is the lunatic fringe shawl it was in the most recent nitty and um, 
in, in case you haven't watched this before, I, I hate Fringe. I think it's really grossly ugly. <laughs> um, but to me, that isn't normal Fringe because it's it's knitted. It's not just hanging yarn, and that's what I really don't like. Uh, but that was it was just too much fun. And and I was really surprised at how much I liked it, but but I knew the exact yarn that I wanted to use. Um, and that is a modification. The pattern calls for an Aran weight and I think size nine or ten. This is spore decay-ish around there, and I'm using a size six. Um, but because it goes from the point out, um, so it's bottom up, obviously. When I get close to running out, I can just bind off and be done. So I'm not too worried about it. The reason I'm, oh, not that I have to justify. There is a reason I'm knitting that. For, um, if you don't remember, um, I spun that last year from two bats that I got from the Sassy Sheep. And I entered it into a skein contest at the Fiber Train uh, fiber festival that's here in town and I won my category and so I thought it would be fun if this year I had it knit up and then Sarah could display it in her booth um, you know maybe it helped get more sales I don't know I just thought it'd be kind of a full circle a fun full circle thing if um, if it was knit up into something this year anyway that is coming up, just as a little side note, Fiber Train is coming up May 25th and 26th. I'm pretty sure of the dates. Um, it's the Sunday, Monday of Memorial Day weekend in Nampa, Idaho, which is where I live. If you decide to come, if you're within driving distance, let me know, because it's it's a lot of fun. It's not huge, but it's, it's new and growing, and it has expanded this year. The classes are up. If you want to go to Fiber Train Festival, fibertrainfestival.com yeah that's the that's the website so yeah if, um, there's a class I'm considering taking it's a supported spindle class how to um, yeah the, the prices are good there's spinning tatting um, how to how to pick a good fleece Brenda Dane is going to be here from the cast on podcast and she will be teaching about um, top-down raglan sweater design. So, anyway, FiberTrainFestival.com. Come, please. Those are all the works in progress I have. Active. Only one of them will be active, and I'm going to talk about that now in between this and FOs. Because I have a few things on the needles right now that have deadlines, and even one, th two things that aren't on the needles <laughs> that have a deadline, I'm going to be monogamous from now until I finish them, which the last ones all have to be finished by June 20th. Um, I just, I found that when I was monogamous with my vodka lemonade sweater, I was able to just focus and get it done. And when I got tired of working on it, instead of picking up another project and just sitting here knitting, I got up and cleaned. And my house has gotten a lot cleaner. And it's been staying clean. And I really like it. So, yeah, it'll be I'll be monogamously knitting for a while. Um, but don't worry. It won't get boring. It'll just be for a little bit. And, and I'll still have, you know, stuff to talk about and show you and all that other kind of stuff. So hang with me for the next, you know, seven weeks-ish if it takes that long. I don't think it will. I hope it doesn't, but it might. But you'll see lots of progress on the, on the projects that I have. So that brings me to what I, um, what I, I wanted to tell you what I have to finish. And, and you'll understand why I'm going monogamous. So the Lunatic Fringe is the first deadline I have coming up, and it's May 25th. Right after that, by May 31st, I have to have the color affection done and the test knit, the shawl test knit that I'm doing for Josh. Um, also, and that's that's all I can say about that. I can't, oh. 
I don't know that I can actually show it to you. I don't think I can. Hmm. We'll find other things to talk about. I'll just try to bust that one out in like a week. <laughs> yeah. Either way. Don't worry. We'll still have things to, to talk about and maybe I'll... Ooh. That could be the week that I do the review on the Fleece and Fiber source book. We will plan on that. In fact, I'm going to write that down. Bear with me for just a second. Do review on this and fiber source book week of testnet. There. I have it written down. That way you guys still have something to look forward to seeing, I guess. All right. Then, um, and like I said, both of those need to be done by the end of May. <coughs> And then I have the next four things are um, being it for the retreat. So they all have a deadline of June 20th. I have both of the graphic infection shawls that are really close to being done. So those won't take much to finish. And then I have the knit along that Mary, um, Mary Gail and I are doing together that I got the special colorway for. Um, I have that, which is a shawl, and then I have um, a little project that I'm going to be knitting um, to be Kimberly on a stick, Kimber Lolly from the Giving Flower podcast, um, because she's in Germany and can't come. She said, hey, take me on a stick to the retreat, and so I'm going to be knitting a little something, and that'll be her. Anyway, it'll be fun. So if you notice, one, two, three four, five, six of the seven objects are shawls. I love making shawls. <clears throat> I've never made this many all at once. <laughs> Ever. I didn't even make this many. I haven't made this many, I don't think, in the last two years combined. <laughs> so, anyway, you're going to be seeing a lot of shawls, and there's a good chance there won't be any more, with the exception of one. But, um... I don't know if I'll be making a lot of shawls for a little while. I I miss making other things like socks. Oh, I miss my socks. Anyway, rambling. <clears throat> that brings me to, okay, I, there's a couple things I don't want to forget to talk about. Um, that and this. Okay. First, I'll talk about my FO. If you have noticed the beautimous sweater I'm wearing, it's my vodka lemonade. I finished it in 12 days. Yahoo! I do this way too much, don't I? It's all right. It's better than going like this. Okay, I could do that too. I finished a sweater in 12 days. It was awesome. Um, it fits nicely. The neck is a little bit wide, but it's but it's not bad. Just a little bit wide. If from blocking, it just kind of relaxed. Um, I only let's see. I only was able to get sleeves right here down to my elbow um, because I I used up pretty much all of my yarn. I was alternating between the two skeins, and. Um, yeah, I only have just a few grams left. I have a ball maybe this big left. So it was it was very well used. I, I actually really like this length. I've never I've never had a sweater that, that hit right here, but I like it. It's long enough that it covers up my, my t shirt, but I think it would still be cute with like a long sleeved a long sleeved uh, shirt under it. So um, let's see if I can show you how nicely it's laying and then here's the lace detail on the back and the lace detail on the front here it's on both um, both front corners and it just look at this oh it just lays so well yesterday I 
crisscrossed it here and just had a shawl pin to keep it closed. Uh, I didn't, I don't know, didn't necessarily need, I just wanted it to stay together. This is Volmiza DK in the, oh, I have it sitting over there, Tollkirsch. Please don't beat me up for butchering the German word. As far as I know, it means black cherry or something close to that. So it's it's a red brown. It's it's showing up pretty nicely on the screen. Anyway, oh my gosh, it's so soft and it smells like Volmiza. If you've had that before, you know what I'm talking about. When I soaked it um, and blocked it, it brought out the smell. Oh, and I know what she uses, and it's in my Amazon wish list. <laughs> I just need to go through the the wool wash that I have already. <laughs> anyway, I love it. I can't say enough good things about it. The pattern is well written. Um, I, I would suggest that if you're going to make it, read through it, which I'm not always one that promotes fully reading through a pattern, um, or just at, at least read through each section as you get to it. It's not, I wouldn't consider it a beginner sweater knitting pattern. There's a little bit of intuitive that goes into it. There's a little bit of just understanding sweaters. Um, that being said, it, it, it's a very well written pattern. I've had two friends who um, saw mine, they were like, I need that pattern. So anyway, yes, and it's by Thea Coleman. Um, that's her baby cocktail. Yeah, something like that. It's called Vodka Lemonade. Just look it up. Huh, I probably have the pattern over there. Anyway, all right, moving on. I have some spinning to show you. I finished the Huckleberry Knits Under the Sea. It was my last, it was the colorway before Here's my February colorway. This is the March one I didn't like and I'm mailing off. I got I got a payment for that. So that will be going in the mail today. So Stacy, if you're watching, it's going out today. I have it packaged. Alright, so under the C, which was 100 percent pole worth. Turned out like this. It is really pretty. And the blues and greens go so well together. And what I like is sometimes there's a barber pulling and sometimes the colors matched up. Um, I didn't ply it really, really tight. I mean, it's tight enough, but there's another spot. I got 422 yards. And I would say, well, it really fluffed up. So, um, I'd say sport weight, still a little bit damp. Um, but yeah, I'd say overall about mm, sport, maybe DK, kind of right in there. So anyway, it's very well balanced. It's perfectly balanced actually, and it was only like this when I pulled it off the wheel. So soaking it just strained it right out. Anyway, I will lay this back out to. Uh, to finish drying. The, the other thing that I've been working on is I bought some Mashem last year for the Knit Girls Expand Your Horizons kind of spin along that they were doing and um, forgot about it and then remembered it the other day and so I decided to start spinning it. This is, I got eight ounces. I split it in half so I could have two things of four ounces just so I could kind of play with it a little bit. Um, I'm going to dye the other half, but here's the first half that I have. I'm not trying to, get, I'm actually trying to get it a little bit thicker. I'm going to be doing a two ply and it's about, I'd say a fingering weight single. I don't love how this feels after it's been spun. It is not soft. I mean, it spins fine. It's kind of weird, and I don't think I would buy it ever again. But, um, and it's 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 not even close to being soft. But 
it's a new experience and I will dye the other stuff and um, spin it up and then use it to knit something that doesn't have to be soft, a monster or something that won't be cuddled, I guess. So anyway, this spun up really fast, um, just in a VKN. And the other half will be done today. So, yep, easy peasy. Uh, that's all of that. As far as designing goes, I have I have a couple of things kind of noodling around in my brain. So I'm not I'm not really going to talk about them right now because they haven't turned into anything yet. I do plan to pick up my sweater again though. Once I get past all of this, <laughs> I will sit and really focus on that because I want to knit it. It's pretty and it's been sitting over there untouched and I feel bad for the pretty yarn. So Yes, that's all. That's really all for designing for, for now, but it'll come. Don't worry. Lastly, um, I have acquisitions, but I don't want to forget. I'll keep this on my lap. I don't want to forget to talk about this. A couple of things. I don't think I showed you my Malabrigo worsted that came in when the um, vintage DK for the class that I'm teaching came in. Um, I know I, t I talked about it, but I don't remember showing you. If I did, you'll get to see it again. I just I saw it sitting on the shelf and I thought, I don't know that I've shown that. <laughs> so anyway, like I said, Smalabrigo Worsted, and it's called the Blue Graphite. It's, the colorway is called Blue Graphite, and I have three skeins of it. And it's really just it's a blue-gray. I'm going to make the artist vest out of it which is why I ordered it. So, anyway, if I already showed it, I apologize, but you get to see it again. It's pretty and squishy and soft. Who doesn't like to see Malabrigo, right? And I have two other acquisitions, but they were um, birthday gifts as well. The first one is the Knitbot Essentials by Hannah Fettig. And it has some great patterns in here. It has the featherweight cardigan, um, which I have the yarn for. Um, and then the other one that I really want to make is, let's see if I can get to it here and um, show you a picture, is the lightweight cardigan. And it's just a nice live-in pullover. And it's made out of fingering, wait, it says fingering or DK. So those are hugely different. Interesting, because there's like a whole weight of yarn in between them. So pretty much whatever gives you gauge, apparently. I'm trying to remember if there was, um, Anything else that I... I did like this one. It's called the Day Beret. It's very basic and simple. Let's see if I can turn it the right way. I really like that. Just, just one of those hats you could make out of a solid color like that is and, you know, just throw it on. Um, anything. The other thing that I got was Weekend Hats. Um, and it's a group of people. Uh, 25 knitted caps, berets, cloches, and more. And, you know, I'm only at 29 minutes. Let me just show you a few that I really like. I'll just go backwards here. I This is the glass hoot, glass hoot. Of course, it's one that is not an English word. Hat. I don't like the pom pom on the top, but I do like the cables. So there's that one. Let's see. Some of them are kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. 
This one's kind of cute. I don't know that I would wear it necessarily, but just because I I think it looks better on people with long hair, but it's called the Welted Toque. Kind of a fun fun design element on the side there. Oh, I really like this one. It's called the Pebbled Beanie by Elizabeth Parker. I love the texture of that and how it has the folded over brim. But it, that's actually, um, is it sewn down? Oh no, I guess it's just folded. You could totally sew it down though and kind of join it together if you wanted to. Let's see. Oh, this one's cute. It's called the Leah Cloche. I like that little ribbon detail with the button. Oh, and this one is the trellis beret. It's just a basic beret. Oh, I keep going the wrong way. Um, just with stripes though instead. I like that. I like um, some of the ideas though too in here. Um, and this is I think what what I'll use the book for a lot too is just to kind of give me some inspiration for things. And then this is the one, the Everdeen Beanie. This is the one from the cover. Um, and the gal who gave this book to me, um, Kathy, who I knit with, um, she has has that hat, and we always love it when she <laughs> when she wears it in. It's really pretty. Um, and this one, I kind of like this one. It's called the Wanderer Cap. It's garter stitch with those kind of, you know, traveling, I don't know if they're slip stitches or kind of cabled, I don't know. I haven't looked at the pattern actually, but I do like that. And then this one, this is called the Plate Beanie, and it has this traveling eye cord. It's really cute. I think. So anyway, and something that this book does have in it that, that other people have talked about that they really like, it has a table of contents that has the pictures, which is really nice because then you know exactly which one you're looking for because you don't always remember the names, you know, of the different patterns and things like that, especially if they're not English and you can't even see them. <laughs> okay. Lastly, oh, and thank you for the birthday wishes. I did want to say that. I don't want to forget. Thank you so much for all the birthday wishes and the gifted patterns. Um, I got some great things off of my off of my wish list. So I'm very thankful for for those of you who thought of me. And um, yeah, I, I appreciate it very much. So it was a great birthday. Lastly, I wanted to talk about, kind. this is a little bit later down the road, but something for you to, to kind of put in the back of your head. In August and September, in honor of surviving Tour de Fleece, I'm going to have a knit along for knitting with your hand spun. Nothing in particular, you could make something as small as a monster chunk. Or a whole sweater. It it doesn't matter. There are really no rules. Just that it needs to be your hand spun. And if you don't spin, use somebody else's hand spun. But um, yeah, I thought it would be a fun way to use up some of that stash because if you're like me, you spin it. You know, you have the fiber. And it's like, oh, I can't wait to see this is yarn. And then you spin it, and oh, this is yarn. It looks beautiful. And then you have your either your tote or your shelf or whatever of hand spun yarn, well guess what? This weird thing happens. When you spin fiber and turn it into yarn, then you've added to your yarn stash. You've taken away from your fiber stash, but you've added to your yarn stash. <laughs> so my goal is to whittle down some of my hand spun yarn stash because the stuff is so pretty. I just want to knit with it. So it'll be August and September. It might turn into kind of an ongoing thing. If you watch the Stockinette Zombies, kind of like how they have their year-long 
stripy sock knit along type idea um, it might kind of turn into you know just show off the items with your hand spun I don't know I'm gonna see what kind of response I get because the board really isn't active the group and so um, I don't know if any of you even care <laughs> to do it I don't know let me know um, but yeah so that'll be coming up also telling you this in advance so if you want to do it you can be prepared July 1st we're going to cast on for the even star going to be a knit along that can last the next two years I have my yarn being dyed by the sassy sheep because as soon as I was gifted that pattern I texted Sarah and I said I need some lace weight for an even star and she said okay so she's doing it in my most favorite color out of the tropics colorway so that'll be awesome um, yeah, and I talked about it kind of in a VKN one night, and a few people went, hey, I, I've been wanting to make that, I've been wanting to make that, and I already have the beads too, so July 1st is the official kickoff date. If you want to join us, please do. It's going to be a really casual knit-along. It'll be a way to have other people who are doing it with you, and um, somebody that can answer questions for you and help you out and things like that. So yeah go buy some what is it 1300 yards 14 something like that a few teen hundred yards of lace weight get your needles beads or not get ready it's coming up so finish all the other things open up some brain space let's get working on some lace charts I think that's all I have and I'm at 37 minutes that's amazing, especially because it's only been two weeks, or because it, because it's been two weeks. Hmm. Alrighty. I hope you have a wonderful week. I promise to be back here next week. And let me know if you ever have any questions. Please feel free to contact me either through Ravelry or Plurk or email me Melissa at MaltranDesigns.com. And if you ever have any suggestions or questions or feedback or anything like that I would love to hear from you I never know if you guys like what I'm doing some of you keep coming back so obviously some of you do <laughs> but anyway I'm gonna stop rambling have a wonderful week and until next time keep knitting